who, who for many years has represented um, a wide part of eastern interior Alaska and including parts of the Matsu Valley. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure to be here, Tim. I thank you very much for asking me to uh, come and say hi. Well, uh, first thing I'd like to ask is a lot of people don't realize how big your district is. Um, I always thought of the, um, you know, the Valley Legislators is representing essentially the, uh, you know, the Matsu region, but it, but it um, turns out your district goes all the way to Canada and <laughs> all the way to Valdez. Maybe you could describe the district and in the, in the communities that it, um, it represents. I appreciate it. You know, you're right. A lot of the time people associate me as a, <clears throat> as a Valley representative, in other words, the Matsu Valley, but my, my district actually starts in the uh, Delta farming area and it goes down the, the Richardson highway all the way to Glen Allen through Glen Allen, all the way to Valdez. And then if you uh, were to take a boat, you would uh, also go to Whittier. And then from Whittier, you would have to cut up across the uh, across the mainland there, straight up through a lazy uh, mountain area in the valley, and then go through the Palmer Fishhook area. And then you would head north until you just touch the Parks Highway. And then you start to cut off back over toward uh, Delta on the, uh, the Denali Highway, all points in between. And it's pretty crazy. It's a very, very large district. It is, it's very diverse. Uh, there's a lot of people who uh, have probably never been to other parts of my district. But it's about 400 and some miles just to go from one end to the other if you're going to campaign it. it uh, it's got to be the size of several states in the lower 48. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Several. Yes, exactly <laughs> right. But, you know, I live in Sutton. All right. So I'm kind of strategically located there. If you think about it, it's not exactly in the middle, but it is pretty centralized. So it's almost two hours to go anywhere in my district. If you go to Delta, it's two hours. Well, I'm sorry. It's about three hours. It's about three hours to Valdez and it's about three hours to Whittier. And then all the other places in between are a lot easier to get to. But those three outer points are about three hours to get to them. Well, one of the things that I wanted to ask is uh, when we think of the valley and we think of Delta, we think of agriculture and, um, you know, there's a lot of interest these days in Alaska being able to, because of supply chain issues, being able to feed ourselves. Um, what, what, what are your thoughts on uh, where farming and agriculture is in Alaska today and what can we do to, to help, help the farmers, to help us feed ourselves? Yeah, I think one of the exciting things about agriculture this year, and I think it's been a progression ever since I've gotten elected. Um, I, I see the governor getting more on board with agriculture. I think that uh, you see a lot of legislation being written about agriculture. You see uh, a lot of world events, which are very concerning for Alaska to be independent whether it's with our oil or whether it's with our, uh, with our uh, uh, agriculture or with mariculture or with a lot of the other entities, whether it's timber, whether it's mining or whatever. And all of that is in my district. And when you think about survival, when you think about sovereignty for the state of Alaska, think about being able, you know, we're disconnected from the lower 48. And so when you think about sovereignty for the state of Alaska and being able to survive disconnected from the lower 48, we're starting to realize the importance of agriculture in our state and how much we're gonna to have to depend on that someday, especially when you look at how easily a war could break out and how it affects us and how it affects the rest of the United States and the rest of the world. Agriculture is gonna be very important in the state of Alaska. Are the uh, the farmers we have now are they are they doing okay financially or do they? Uh... I think right now, farmers are doing. It depends on what how you look at it. You know, you have vegetables, you have uh, hay, you have uh, you have uh, 
livestock, you have um, all different variety of, of food source that we have in the state of Alaska. And right now we could probably, if you're looking at the livestock end of it, we could probably use uh, some US uh, DA uh, processing plants. We could use a few more of those. If you look at uh, uh, vegetable gardening, we're going about to open up some areas in uh, the Nanana area, which will help out uh, a lot of the vegetable growers because right now they have a lot lower altitude that they need to grow. And as far as barley grows, barley can grow at a higher altitude. It's doing very well in Delta. Um, but, uh, you know, some of the other crops, they need more of a lower altitude, which means a warmer climate, a longer season. And so that's what we're hoping to accomplish by opening up some of that farmland and that ag land up there. Yeah, the, the Nanana area is um, was talked about years ago as being a um, uh, sort of a possible addition to or alternative to Delta, and but it needed a bridge, and now we have a bridge, so there's access to those lands, and, and the, the state is going to open them up this this year. Yeah, it's it's uh, one of the things that this uh, administration has done is they planned ahead for that, and they went ahead with it, and so now. I believe they've uh, surveyed the lots. They're going to open up about 2,000 acres starting and see how that uh, takes off and what it's going to evolve into. And I think it's really exciting that we should be able to uh, find new farmland that we can do in a, in a land that, uh, that it's not too hilly and it's very flat. It's very low in elevation. It's very uh the the temperature i think will be fine for a, a long harvest season so it's very exciting in that way in that respect so it's also close to infrastructure you know just a few miles west of dinana and close to the railroad and the parks highway that's a real you no know, that's that's what really makes it better uh it's close to the and, and you know we we have just a little bit of a railroad to build left in the valley to get out to the port there we also can get to the port in anchorage which is called the uh Port of Alaska and Seward. Either way, we can uh, we can be able to access those points, uh, especially the Port of Alaska right away and Seward. So this is a it's a very great location, as you just mentioned. Well, Representative Rush, we thank thanks for joining us today. It's uh, it's good, and we hope to talk more about these things in the, in the near future. Well, I really appreciate it. There's a, a lot of exciting things going on in our district. Um, if you ever want to talk about them, Valdez, the port, the pipeline runs all the way up the west side of my, I mean, the east side of my district, all the way from Valdez through uh, Delta. And there's a whole range of military bases, airports, uh, private airports, large airports, um, uh, mining, coal and gold. It's a very exciting district. It's a, it's a very, it's an honor for me to represent it. And I hope that they feel I'm doing well. I, and when I get elected and I believe that it shows that I am. Well, thanks. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much. You have a great day, Tim.